Have you ever wondered why Java is such a popular programming language? Well, let's kick off our journey into the world of Java, a high-level, class-based, object-oriented programming language that has taken the tech world by storm. It's like the universal language of the internet, connecting people, places, and things across the globe. Java is a high-level language, which means it's designed to be easy for us, human beings, to read and write. It's also class-based, implying that it uses classes or blueprints to create objects or instances of those blueprints. This allows for a design method where redundant code is eliminated and reusability is emphasized, a principle known as object-oriented programming. But what makes Java stand out in the crowded room of programming languages? Four key features, platform independence, security, robustness, and simplicity. Platform independence is Java's claim to fame. Write your code once and run it anywhere, that's the motto. This is because Java code is compiled into bytecode, which can run on any device that has a Java virtual machine, JVM, regardless of the underlying computer architecture. Next up, security. Java was designed with security in mind. It features a robust security model that prevents both compiled and interpretive code from violating system integrity, making it a go-to for many organizations dealing with sensitive data. Robustness in Java refers to its strong memory management, exception handling, and type checking mechanisms, all of which help in building reliable, error-free applications. And finally, simplicity. Java was designed to be easy to learn and use effectively. It eliminates certain complexities like explicit pointers and operator overloading found in other languages, making the code easier to read and write. Now that we have a basic understanding of what Java is and why it's so popular, it's time to roll up our sleeves and delve deeper into its core concepts. Buckle up, because the journey ahead is going to be exciting. Java, like any other language, has its own syntax and structure. Understanding these is crucial to becoming proficient in Java. So, let's dive straight into it. First, let's focus on the structure of a Java program. Every Java program begins with a class definition. A class is a blueprint from which we create objects, which are instances of the class. The class definition includes the class name, followed by a pair of curly braces within which we define methods. The main method is where our program starts running. Now let's talk about variables. Variables are the names of memory locations where we store data. But before we can use a variable, we need to declare it, indicating the type of data it will contain, which brings us to data types. Java is a statically typed language, which means we must declare the data type of a variable when we create it. Java supports two types of data, primitive, which includes integers, characters, boolean, and floating point, and reference, which includes classes, interfaces, and arrays. Next, let's discuss operators. Operators are symbols that perform operations on variables and values. Java has several types of operators like arithmetic, relational, logical, and bitwise, each serving its own purpose. Now let's circle back to the concept of classes and objects. As mentioned earlier, a class is a blueprint, and an object is an instance of a class. For example, if animal is a class, then dog, cat, elephant could be the objects of the animal class. Each object has its own state and behavior. The state is stored in fields, and behavior is shown through methods. Lastly, remember that Java is case-sensitive. The uppercase hello and the lowercase hello are not the same in Java. Paying attention to such small details can save you from a lot of headaches later on. Mastering these syntax basics will set a strong foundation for your Java programming journey. Now that you're familiar with the basics, you're ready to delve deeper into the world of Java. So let's keep going. Control flow statements are the backbone of any programming language, and Java is no exception. Let's dive into the world of control flow statements in Java. These statements allow your program to make decisions and repeat actions, thereby controlling the flow of execution. They are the key to making your program dynamic and responsive. First up, we have conditional statements. These are the decision makers in Java. The most basic one is the if statement. With if, you can ask your program to perform a task only if a certain condition is met. But what if you want to offer an alternative? That's where else comes in. Combine them and you get the if else statement, which allows your program to choose between two options based on a condition. Next, we have the switch statement, another conditional statement. It's a bit like a more elaborate if-else. Instead of just two options, switch lets you choose from multiple possibilities. It's especially useful when you're dealing with a variable that can take on several values. Now let's talk about looping statements, the repetition masters. Java offers three types, for, while, and do-while. 
The for loop is perfect when you know exactly how many times you want to repeat an action. The while loop, on the other hand, keeps going as long as a condition is true. Finally, the do while loop is a slight twist on the while loop. It performs the action once before checking the condition, ensuring the action gets done at least once. But what happens when things go wrong? That's where exception handling comes in. In Java, you can use try and catch to anticipate and handle potential errors. This way, instead of crashing, your program can deal with the issue and continue running. With the understanding of these control flow statements, you can start writing more complex and dynamic programs in Java. So go ahead and experiment, create, and most importantly, have fun with Java. As you progress in your Java programming journey, you will come across some advanced concepts. Let's start with inheritance. It's a mechanism that allows one class to acquire the properties and behaviors of another. Think of it as a child inheriting traits from their parents. The class that inherits is called the subclass or child class, while the class that is inherited from is known as the superclass or parent class. Inheritance promotes code reusability and hierarchical classifications. Next up is polymorphism, a Greek word that means many forms. In Java, polymorphism allows methods to perform different things based on the object that it is acting upon. This plays a crucial role in allowing objects having different internal structures to share the same external form. Then there's abstraction, which is all about hiding the complex details and showing only the essentials. It's like driving a car. You don't need to know how the engine works to drive it, right? Similarly, abstraction lets you use Java classes without knowing their inner workings. Encapsulation is another key concept. It's the technique of making the fields in a class private and providing access to them via public methods. Think of it as a protective shell that prevents the data from being accessed directly. It's all about data hiding to prevent unauthorized access and modification. Finally, let's touch on multi-threading. It's a feature that allows concurrent execution of two or more parts of a program for maximum utilization of CPU. Each part of such a program is called a thread, and each thread defines a separate path of execution. Imagine a restaurant kitchen, where multiple chefs are working on different dishes at the same time. That's multi-threading in action. These advanced concepts are what make Java a powerful and versatile programming language. Java is a vast language with numerous features and concepts to explore. We've just scratched the surface, but already we've covered a lot of ground. We started our journey with an introduction to Java, understanding its origin, its key features, and its significance in the world of programming. We then moved to the basic syntax of Java, exploring the fundamental building blocks of the language, such as variables, data types, operators, and expressions. We learned how to write simple Java programs and how to debug them. We also touched on error handling and how to deal with exceptions. From there, we dove into Java's control flow statements. We learned about decision-making statements like if, else, and switch, and looping statements like for, while, and do while. We saw how these statements control the flow of our programs, allowing us to create more complex and dynamic applications. Next, we ventured into the advanced concepts of Java. We explored object-oriented programming, delving into classes, objects, inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation. We also touched on some of the more advanced features of Java, such as multi-threading, networking, and database connectivity. But remember, knowing the concepts is just the beginning. To truly master Java, you need to practice. Write code, make mistakes, debug, and learn. Experiment with different features, create your own applications, solve problems. The more you code, the more comfortable you'll become with the language. Java is a powerful tool in the world of programming. It's used in everything from web applications to mobile apps, from enterprise systems to embedded devices. The opportunities are endless. So keep learning, keep coding, and keep exploring. Remember, every expert was once a beginner. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to make mistakes. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. So don't be afraid to dive in and get your hands dirty. With consistent practice and dedication, you can master Java and unlock new opportunities in the world